we extend the use of nonparametric techniques to the comparison of two populations. Remember with parametric tests, we might be interested in whether the means of two populations were similar to each other. So we collect a sample from each population, find the sample means, and compare their magnitudes to each other. However, parametric methods require the assumption that the sampling distribution is well approximated with the normal distribution. As we saw previously, sometimes this assumption doesn't work, whether because the population is so far removed from a normal distribution, or because we just can't collect a sufficiently large sample size for the central limit theorem to help us. In such a case, we have to use non-parametric methods for hypothesis testing. For two populations, we use the Wilcoxon rank sum test to address this situation. It's similar to the often used Mann-Whitney test. Rather than comparing the magnitude of differences in the mean values of two different populations, the Wilcoxon rank sum test requires that we mix the observations of the two populations together, though maintaining a marker about which population each came from, providing a numeric rank of those values from smallest to largest, and then summing up the ranks of the two populations. If the sum of the ranks of the two populations are a lot different from each other, then perhaps the two populations are not the same. Say we have two different populations, population 1 and population 2. And we want to test whether the distributions of these two populations have similar measures of central tendency. We don't specify the measure of central tendency, as we can't with this particular test statistic that we're going to use. But we want to know whether the populations have similar central tendency, or whether one distribution is shifted to the left or the right of the other. One set of hypotheses that we might address would include a null hypothesis that the distributions D1 and D2 are identical, and the alternative hypothesis D1 is shifted either to the left or to the right of D2. This would be a two-tailed test, as we're not specifying a particular direction of the shift. It could be to the right or to the left. Another set of hypotheses could have an alternative hypothesis that D1 is found to the right of D2, suggesting that the central tendency of population 1 lies to the right of population 2. Finally, a third set of hypotheses has an alternative hypothesis that contains D1 shifted to the left of D2. We reject the null hypothesis in each of these situations if the sample evidence tells us that there's a reason to believe that the distributions don't have the same central tendency. And the way that we do this is by collecting a sample of size N1 from population 1 and a sample of size N2 from population 2. We mix all the observations together, so we remember which observations came from each distribution. We rank order the combined observations from smallest to largest. The smallest value has rank 1, and the largest value has rank N1 plus N2. Tied observations, if they occur, are assigned ranks equal to the average of the ranks of the tied observations. Let's take a look at an example from Duff Brewery. Say that you're studying the bursting strength and PSI of two different aluminum can designs. You collect 10 cans from the old design, call it population 1, and 10 cans from the new design, call it population 2. The bursting strength was measured as the pressure at which cans filled with water burst when pressurized. So we have 20 total observations, and we combine them together, keeping a marker for the cans that belong to the old design and the new design. Then we order all 20 from smallest to largest, the smallest bursting strength observation, 137 PSI, belonging to a can from the new design, population 2, has rank 1. And the largest strength, 219 PSI, also from population 2, has rank 20. But in between, we see a few ties. A few cans that have the exact same bursting strength. When we encounter such a situation, we average their orders together. For example, three cans have bursting strengths of 211 PSI. These cans were originally ordered 10, 11, and 12. Since they're all tied, we average the three original order values together to get an average rank of 11. Similarly, two cans have bursting strengths of 212 PSI. Their original order values were 13 and 14, and their ranks would be the average of 13 and 14, which is 13.5. We apply this approach to all 20 observations, getting a rank for each. Then we separate the populations out again, and we calculate the sum of the ranks for each population. The sum of the ranks for population 1, we call this value T1, is 114.5. The sum of ranks for population 2, or T2, is 95.5. 
Now to implement a test statistic. When sample sizes for each population are at least 10, we can use a Z statistic. We compare T1, the sum of the ranks for population 1, to the expected value of T1, and divide the difference by the standard deviation expected from T1. The expected value of T1 is what we would expect the sum of the ranks to be if population 1 and population 2 are distributed equally. Think about what we're doing. If T1 is really big, if it's a lot larger than its expected value, that must mean that there are some very large values collected from population 1 relative to population 2. As such, we might find that population 1 is distributed to the right of population 2. Likewise, if T1 is small, then it has observations that are small with lower ranks relative to population 2. And as such, population 1 may lie to the left of population 2. We're not dealing with the magnitude of the values, only their ranks. And note that we only use T1 in the test statistic, because that's all we need. The sum of the ranks T1 plus T2 is, by definition, N1 plus N2 times N1 plus N2 plus 1 divided by 2. So if the sum of the ranks T1 is large, that means that T2 must be small, and vice versa. So even if only T1 appears in the test statistic, we're drawing conclusions about both populations relative to each other. Say for our Duff Brewery example, we want to answer a two-tailed hypothesis. We just want to know if the two design distributions are different from each other. The test statistic is 0.718. Using the norm S disk function in Excel, and with a little manipulation, we get that the p-value is 2 times 0.236, which is 0.472. That's a very large p-value, much, much larger than any alpha we'd ever choose. We fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the distributions are essentially the same. That is, two distributions who have rank sums of 114.5 and 95.5 are essentially the same distribution. Again, nonparametric tests are not very strong tests. We have to be very convinced that these two distributions are different to ever reject the null hypothesis. When sample sizes are smaller than 10, there's a set of lookup tables with which to compare T1 and T2. That is, if T1 lies beyond some value, then we reject the null hypothesis. You know enough about this test to explore how to handle small sample sizes by searching for more information on the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Also, there's an extension of this test that we can use to accommodate matched pair designs, where the two populations of interest are dependent on each other. The important thing is to understand that these methods broadly exist, and to know enough about them to look up more specific tests depending on what your data look like.